Can you believe it's that time of year again? The Premier League is back. So you know what that means? It's time for my 2020-21 Premier League predictions. Now, before I start, I just want to preface and say, please don't take these predictions personal, okay? It's not a personal dig on you or the club you support. These are just my opinions. A good chance they're going to be wrong. Okay, so it's just all love. It's just what I think that's going to happen. You don't like to see any team goes down, but it's just the way the cookie crumbles. It's just the way the Premier League works. Some teams have to be relegated. And I think in 20th position, it's going to be West Brom. I was completely wrong last year. And I'm pretty sure 99% of other people will too with Sheffield United. But West Brom this year, I just think they're just going to struggle. Okay, they finished second last season. And the championship to Leeds, which there was no shame to that. Leeds were a good outfit last season. I just think this season for West Brom, it's going to be a little bit too much. I just think they're going to lack creativity. Uh, going forward, Robertson Kanu and Charlie Austin. Uh, look, they did all right for West Brom last year. But I can't see them doing bits. Like, I can't see one of them, uh, either one of them, uh, scoring 20 goals or more. Okay, or at least the pair of them, at least getting 15 each. Because that's what's going to be required for them to stay up. I just can't see it happening. And for that, i got West Brom finishing in 20th place. Now, a 19th spot also from the championship last season, I've got Fulham. We all know what happened to Fulham last time they came in the Premier League two years ago. They went straight back down. I don't think they're going to spend the crazy money they did last time again. Okay, well, they haven't so far. I don't think they're going to do it till the uh, transfer window closed. I just think... Again, like West Brom, just a lack of quality. You just know Mitrovic at some point in the season is going to get injured or he's going to get suspended. Okay, now who do they have that can step up to score the goals for Fulham? Okay, yeah, they could probably share it around. You know, I think Scott Parker's doing a good job. I seen an interview the other day talking about getting the players' mentality right. I think they've got that covered. I just think... Just the goals, mate. It's the Premier League. <laughs> it's, a, it's a struggle for a lot of clubs, but I think... Fulham, they just need, uh, not I wouldn't say a backup to Mitrovic, they just need someone else, that another avenue of options to get the goals. But unfortunately, I just don't think they're going to get that, which is why, in my opinion, they're going to get relegated in 18th spot and the last of the relegation clubs going down. I've got Aston Villa. I don't want to see Aston Villa get relegated. They finished 17th last season. They survived. They stayed in the Premier League and got to keep their golden boy in Jackie Grealish. Now, what a remarkable job it was for them to do that. Can they back it up, though? Can they go again? Look, personally, I don't think so. Like, Fulham and West Brom, I just I just see a lack of creativity. They're very well aligned on Jack, uh, Jackie Grealish. Good player, quality, but if he was to get a serious, serious injury... I just can't see how they're going to create Trezeguet. Is he going to step up? And defending as well. Okay, I just think that they're going to have to get a lot of clean sheets. They're going to have to step up their game. And I just think at their back, they're just leaking goals. They were the worst club in the Premier League after the 80th minute. They finished, they conceded 16 goals throughout the whole season in the last 10 minutes of the game. Ranking them number one in the Premier League for uh, conceding uh, most goals of late. So they're going to have to fix that if they want to uh, fix that trend. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think it will continue, which is why I think they're going to go down. All right, in 17th spot, I've got West Ham. Now, West Ham finished 16th last season. Uh, I think they're also going to survive this season. But I think it's going to be of the heavy shoulders on Declan Rice. I think if West Ham can keep hold of Declan Rice for another season... I think he's got enough in him to keep uh, West Ham up. I think uh, West Ham, they, they, they struggled last season with the likes of... Um, I, I watched a fair bit of their games and they scored a lot of goals and they got to the lead a lot of goals. They just dropped a lot of points. They just bottled it a lot of the time. So if they could just somehow fix that, I think they're gonna, they can go a long way. But in my opinion, they're just going to be another relegation scrap which I think they will survive, and don't be surprised if you see David Moyes sacked. In 16th spot, I've got Crystal Palace. Palace last season finished 14th, so 
I think they are going to tail off just that little bit. Again, it's just uh, chance creation. I can't really see where the goals are going to come from Crystal Palace. Like, Zaha is definitely an option. I think now this season, he'll get back to the better form that he was that couple seasons ago. Now that he didn't get that big move. Now, I think he can focus forward. I think he can step up for Crystal Palace. That's why I think they're going to be okay. But I just can't see Benteke and, and Ayu and that coming together, scoring the goals. I think this is going to be Hodgson's last year as well. But I think they'll be fine. They're just, just not going to do that well. All right, now 15th spot, I've got Newcastle United. Newcastle last season finished 13th with Steve Bruce. No one's seen that coming, true? Considering, hey, listen to this, yeah? Rafa Benitez, the season before, also finished 13th with Newcastle. Hey, hey? No, but in all seriousness, I think they're going to be okay. Nothing great. I think they're just... They're going to be just typical Newcastle. Last season, Newcastle, their top scorer was a midfielder who started 70% of their matches. Not a good sign. But in saying that, they've made some decent signings. Callum Wilson, I think he's going to be all right. Look, he didn't have the greatest season last year with uh, Bournemouth. But again, they didn't create much, you know. Hey, he meant to score a lot of goals when you were not creating. Okay, um, I think he'll be all right. With the addition of Frazier, uh, Ryan Frazier... He'll be not bad. And Jamal Lewis at, uh, at uh, left back too. I think it's decent. Not, not too bad for Newcastle. In 14th spot, I've got Brighton. Brighton, they're going to do okay. Nothing too special. They'll avoid the relegation, but I don't think they're going to exceed the top 10. Gary Potter's men have another year underneath him. I think they're going to be okay. But again, like the clubs underneath him, I think they're going to struggle scoring goals. Last season, only Newcastle and Bournemouth were the only two clubs to score fewer goals than Brighton so that's a little bit concerning considering they haven't bought no really out and out goal scorers with the addition of Adam Lallana I think he's going to be all right I think he's going to create chances and with the likes of you know Trussard with him having his second season in the Premier League I think they're going to be all right Brighton they'll be all right now in 13th spot I've got Sheffield United oh higher than 20th last season but uh, yeah they end up finishing in the top 10 last season who's seen that coming Nobody, absolutely nobody. Um, but no seriousness though, I think they're gonna they're gonna taper off a bit this season, okay? Now I think um losing Henderson to United is pretty massive with them, especially replacing them with Ramsdale uh Ramsdale, not quite the same quality, are they? Again, I think they're gonna be solid at the back. I think that you, you know Chris Wilders, men, you just know they're gonna be structured, everyone's gonna know their roles. Ah, uh, just like with the clubs underneath them. It's really, it's really a reoccurring theme here, isn't it? Uh, lack of goals. Where are Sheffield going to get their goals? I think I think they're going to be right, but I just think if they just bought a powerhouse up forward, I think they could really push that top six. But until they sign them, I just think they're going to taper off more than they did last season, which I've got them finishing in the bottom 10. In 12th, I've got Burnley. I've got Deich's men. Now, mate, what a season Burnley had last season. A lot better than the season before, which they struggled to be in the Europa League and they just survived in the Premier League. But last season was just a good, solid season for Burnley. You think with the season they had finishing in the uh, 10th spot, they finished in 10th spot? Let me confirm. Yeah, 10th spot it was. Especially with Nick Pope and goal, you think, mate, this guy went for the uh, clean sheet record. They could kick on from here. They could really build from here. But that's why I really feel sorry for Sean Dice. Just really hasn't been backed in the market. And I just think for that reason, they're not really going to exceed what they did last season. I can't see them keeping their momentum up. I think their lack of investment is the reason why they're going to tail off the second half of the season. In 11th spot, I've got Southampton, which funnily enough, they finished 11th last season, so I've got them exactly the same. Man, considering last season, when Southampton lost that 9-0 massacre to Leicester, I thought it was all downhill for Southampton. They really kicked on. That second half of the season, especially in that Project Restart, uh, once they came back, they really did well. The last eight games of the season were outstanding for Southampton, and I think they'll kick on from there. The only thing I worry about for Sam Fampton is their reliance on Danny Ings. I seen a stat the other day, Danny Ings scored 43% uh, of Southampton's goals. Now, if he was to go down with a big injury, which he's known for, they could be in a little bit of strife. But I don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to be positive and optimistic for Southampton. 
The likes of Redmond coming into their prime and a few other players, uh, Ward Prowse. I think they're gonna be alright, Southampton. I think I think they could be a surprise package and do even better than 11th. And in 10th spot, I've got the champions of the championship. Leeds. Surprising, yeah? Someone in the top 10 from the championship the previous season. We said last season with Sheffield. I think we're more likely to see it this season with Leeds. They had an amazing season. And to be fair, even though I'm a United fan, it's good to see Leeds back in the Premier League. I love seeing big clubs where they belong. And I think Leeds will stay in the Premier League, top 10. Bielsa's men were looking amazing last season. Can they continue their good form? I think they will. I really think they've got a strong brand. They play that high press, quick attacking football. I think they're going to be all right. Where they struggled last season was their big chances created. And I think with Rod, the signing of Rod, uh, Rodrigo, I think it's going to fix that. And I think this season leads. You watch it. I'll finish in the top 10. In ninth spot, I've got Wolverhampton Wanderers. Are they even called that anymore? I don't think so. Just Wolves. <laughs> wolves in ninth spot. I think they're going to taper off. Um, look, it's a tricky one with Wolves. I just think they're, they're very backed. Uh, they're such a good side. Uh, almost so close to making that top four last season. I just think this season, it might be a bit too much for them. Everything might come a bit too soon. They had one of the longest seasons Ever. I think it was officially the longest season uh, a club has ever had in history. I think it went for 14 months. I think so. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, I just think they're at that level where they want to break into the top six on a regular. I just think their best players now are going to get picked by the, the, bigger, club, uh, by the bigger clubs. You see that with Matt Doherty going to um, Tottenham. And you're seeing that Adama Troyer looks like he's on the way, his way out. So I just think it's just... Going to be a little bit too much. Last season, it was a game of two house walls. Uh, they were ranked 19th in the first half. They were one of the worst clubs in the Premier League in the first 45 minutes. But it was a game of two halves. In the second half of the, um, in the, second half of the games, Wolves were ranked third, only behind City and Liverpool. They would come home strong and win games. We've seen that how many times last season. Can they just put it together? Can they just put the full 90 minutes together because if they can, they'll prove me wrong and they'll finish a lot higher than ninth. I just think with European football and the Europa League and just their squad's not as good as it was last season, I think it's just going to be all a little bit too much for Wolves. Now on eighth spot, I've got Ancelotti's Everton. I think this is the uh, Ancelotti is going to get that club looking for more success. Like, well, they're already looking for more success. They're actually going to deliver the success. I just think Ancelotti... Another year he's going to have with Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin. The signing of James Rodriguez is decent. I just don't think that's too good of a sizing or, uh, signing what people are making out. Like he was good five years ago, but I just don't think he's going to cut it as good as what everyone else says in the Premier League. But Angel Gomez is back now for Everton. So I think Everton, look, last season they struggled really when they went behind. When they went behind... Yeah, they just stayed behind. Yeah, there was no fight in them to come back. I think if they can fix that, if they can have just a little bit of heart about them with the likes of their quality of players that they got, they can mix that together. I think they're in for a good season under Ancelotti. In seventh spot, I've got Leicester. Yes, Brendan Rodgers. Rodgers? Rodgers? Brendan Rodgers? I've got Brendan Rodgers in seventh position. Look, Leicester, they're going to have to pick themselves up for that disappointing end to last season. Look, they're in the top three for like 80% of last season and just tailed off at the wrong time of the season. Look, I think Brendan Rodgers, look, people are picking on him and just saying, look, is he that man of the job? He's always choking. He did it with Liverpool. He's doing it now with Leicester. Look, give the man some credit, okay? It was his first full season with Leicester and look what he delivered, Okay. It was a pretty good season. I just think, look, two seasons back to back now, they lost uh, Aaron Maguire and now they're going to lose Ben Chilwell. How are they going to deal with that? Look, last season didn't have Pereira. They get him back now. Um, I think a few more signings before the transfer window ends uh, would be decent for Leicester because you know they buy well. They've always bought well. And I just think with the likes of... Uh, they just got quality. Jamie Vardy, Madison, Tillemans... Uh, Harvey Barnes is another year older now. I just think 
Leicester had that quality and I think they'll be okay and they'll finish 7th. That time for that top 6, it's hard. Honestly, today I really had to put my thinking cap on and have a think. The top 6, what's going to happen? Different scenarios, but ultimately I come up with in 6th position, I've got Arsenal. Now don't hate me Arsenal fans, okay? It's not personal, it's just my prediction. Look, it's an improvement from last year. You were eighth, okay? Now, my memory's fresh, okay? The second last game of the season, you were tenth. You've had a horrible season last season. I'm not forgetting about that, okay? You were proper dog shit, okay? But Arteta turned things around, okay? Won two trophies. Momentum is in North, uh, in North London and wearing red, okay? I'll give you that. Fair play to you. I think Arteta is going get to get Arsenal going. I think they're going to be right this season. I just can't see them breaking into the top four though, okay? They just weren't, the, the, the quality wasn't there. I was seeing a stat the other day that Ozil and Pepe were their biggest, highest um, players that created the most chances, okay? None of them two are nailed on. They're not guaranteed starters for Arsenal. That could be an issue, but Pepe's another year older now. He's going to get used to the Premier League. Saka's another year Although a lot of youngsters at Arsenal are, another, are going to get another season, are going to be more experienced. And I think that can hold them in good stem, especially the biggest thing for, for Arsenal is Aubameyang staying. Now that he's going to stay, goals are going to guarantee to come. So I just think they're just, they're just not ready for the top four just yet. So six spot for Arsenal. Now in fifth position, I've got the other North London club. Yes, Tottenham. Jose Mourinho's. Tottenham. What a crazy year it was for Tottenham last season. Coming off the back of a Champions League final, I thought, geez, they're going to kick on now. New stadium, new signings, they're going to be decent. But nah, Pochettino got sacked, Jose Mourinho come in, and wow, who's seen that coming? Now, for this season under Jose Mourinho, I think Tottenham are going to be a lot more sturdy at the back. We've seen the signings of Hoiberg and uh, Matt Doherty, which I think are fantastic buys. I think that's going to be massive for Tottenham. Ultimately, I think that is the reason why I think they're going to uh, finish above Arsenal. I just see them more solid at the back than Arsenal. And you know they've got the quality going forward with Harry Kane, uh, Son, uh, Lucas. I just think Tottenham have got enough in them, or enough quality uh, to finish above Arsenal, but ultimately not good enough to finish in the top four. All right, now for the Champions League spots. Oof, this is where shit gets real. Coming in at fourth spot is none other than Man United. Man United finished third last season, so I think they're gonna digress in position, but I think they're gonna improve as a club. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, in my opinion, I don't know if they overachieved last season, United. I just think, Look, it was a great season for Man United last year. I think we came on leaps and bounds. I think a lot of players improved. Um, we went on a massive run. 19 games unbeaten, I think it was. We improved at the back um, with the signings of Harry Maguire and Aaron Basaka. Our defence was, at, at one stage in the season, I think it was around January, February, it was in the top five in all of Europe. So, a big improvement there. With the addition of Bruno Fernandes in that midfield, we created a lot, which was amazing. And 20 goals each for Marcus Rashford and uh, Anthony Martial. A big weakness for United without a shadow of a doubt is the set-piece defending. I think from set-pieces last season, from free kicks, corners, United were awful, letting in goals left, right, centre. Even though the defence was good and only Liverpool and um, Man City conceded less goals, uh, from set pieces, defending, United were just atrocious. And I think, another thing, if United want to improve, it's got to be the addition of better quality um, in the squad, okay? I think United are too reliant on the big players. When Pogba went down last year, uh, United went down. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, if he was to go down, would be very reliant on him. I just think, if we can get the addition of Jadon Sancho uh, and probably Upper Meccano, I just think the whole squad overall uh, will be in much better shape going forward than just relying on the big players. So that's why I've got United coming in at fourth. Now, for the top three and coming in at third, 
is none other than Chelsea. Yes, I've got Chelsea in third spot. Now, last year, Chelsea finished fourth, just made it into the Champions League spot. It was a very, very close race between Leicester, Man United, and Chelsea. You all know, we're going to tell you nothing, but Chelsea, they've just had one of the best off-seasons ever including football manager and FIFA. They've just gone and signed everybody. Reminds me, uh, reminded me of Abramovich back in 04, 03, when they just signed everyone. <laughs> Chelsea just gone bang. Kai Havertz, uh, Thiago Silva, Ben Chilwell, Hakim Zayich. Uh, the list goes on and on. But the question for me, seriously though, last year, Chelsea were very inconsistent, okay? Now, those quality, their signings that can go straight into the first 11. The issue for me is they're going to turn all of those results around, which I think they'll improve. But how will they gel together? Will they be good enough? Will things just click for them? Because if things can click, mark my words, Chelsea can be title contenders if things click. I've seen Chelsea go from 10th to champions in a season before. There's no reason why they can go from 4th to champions. Uh, they've got the quality to do it. I just don't think they're going to gel that good at first. And considering they're in the Champions League as well, a lot more games. Uh, I think their depth is going to be tested a little bit. But I think they're going to be fine. I think the season after, they'll be definitely pushing for a title push. But uh, this season, they'll be third. <sighs> this was a tough decision. This was a tough, tough, tough decision. Right. Coming in second in the league, I've got the champions, Liverpool. <sighs> I know, I know. Look, in all honesty though, Liverpool, uh, look, City are going to be champions. Yes, that's my prediction. Liverpool will avoid complacency, I reckon. Okay, now this was such a tough decision. Honestly, it was so, so close. Now, the reason why I've given it to City over Liverpool, it, pff, thinking or anything, it's just the quality in depth. And that's all it is, okay? I just think Liverpool's first 11 are, are, are better. But I just think over the course of a season, I just think City will do it. I just think they just will. Liverpool, their front three, if any of them get injured, okay, things could go south very quick for Liverpool, okay? But in saying that, I said that last season, none of them got injured, okay? Now, if you add Thiago Alicantara, I can see Liverpool staying champions. I can really see Liverpool, uh, if anything, just extending their good run, okay? But City, on the other hand, okay, if they get cooler belly, that's a massive, considering they've already got Ake and Laporte is back. Now, scoring goals for City wasn't the issue, it was defending. Last year, they will pump sides 4-0 on the regular. We've seen it happen. Now, City have no fight in them. Now, I just want to say something about them last season, okay? Now, when they scored first, 13 games from 13 games, when they scored first, they won them all. Every single one of them. But when they conceded, okay, City only won three of those 13 games, losing nine of them. Sometimes it's not about the size of the dog in the fight. Sometimes it's just about the size of the fight in the dog. Pep Guardiola, you've been found out. Okay, now this season you need to step up, okay? With all this spending you are doing, you haven't won a Champions League since 2011. I think Klopp's got your number, but I believe in you. I think you will bounce back. And it's not that I believe in you more than Klopp. I think it just more financially, you are better off, and which is why I'm giving the edge uh, to you over Klopp. But yes, there we go, lads. My predictions here for another year. No doubt we're going to come back by the end of the season and review all this and see how many I got right and how many I got wrong. No doubt I'm going to be pulling the little hair I have left out. <laughs> But uh, yeah, lads, if you enjoyed this uh, video, please do me a huge favor because a lot of effort went into making this. Hit that like button. And if you're interested in Premier League content, well, hit that subscribe button because I've got more coming your way. Anyways, I'm your boy, Curtis7. Take care and puts.